Okay, get ready for this. A big announcement today. The Perseverance rover has found the type of rocks they've always been looking for on Mars. Let's talk about this. All right, this is the rock that they're looking at that's so important. ...dated by silica and carbonate. These phases are known on Earth to be good at preserving biosignatures. Carbonate is a phase that forms an association with fluids such as water, which is really important in our search for evidence for past life on Mars. It's still a bit of a mystery what this rock is. There are interesting textures um, that could be consistent with either an igneous rock or a sedimentary rock. And that's what makes it so exciting to us as scientists is because we get to put our thinking caps on and really try and solve this puzzle. All right, let's, let's try. Okay, remember this. This is whole blood. And what is in whole blood? They did a panel of 26 elements in whole blood and in plasma and in serum. And these are the elements. All right, lithium, beryllium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, all the way up, all, all the, pretty much all the way up through these transition metals primarily. There's 26 of them that they wanted to look into what is the standard amount is in your blood. And they did an extremely deep study of this. All of these different um, elements and how much is in them and the quantities and all that stuff and it's I believe this is whole blood yeah whole blood and then they also did um, plasma right plasma they did because it, it, a little your blood changes when it's whole blood basically means arterial blood it's got all the oxygen it's got all the nutrients in it then you get into your used up blood is the, the plasma and the serum and that was the plasma and here comes the serum and that's after it's been you know exhausted of its of its nutritional stuff so they they did this but these are all of the different metals now why do I make a big deal out of this why is it so important to know all these different metals in blood plasma and, and, and uh, the serum because I am making the allegation that what I'm going to show you is biology and it does have blood in it and it can be tested for these metals and they just took a sample from Bennu which I claim is a biological body part and they took a sample from that they brought it back it's on earth here they have it they can test it and they should they, they, they're spending millions and millions of dollars doing these tests I, all I want to know is do they fit this profile and then we will know if my allegation is correct and I allege that it is a body part all right I just showed you the metallic profile of what is in blood. It's just nothing but metals. Iron and all those other metals and then some liquids. That is what your blood is made of. And it carries things around because of these transition metals. And I showed you the blood inside of an iron, whatever it was, a heart or lung or a liver. And I believe it's probably a liver because it doesn't have the, the plumbing like a, a, a lung has or a heart has. Now, when I said that I think that comet or asteroid Bennu is a heart, that's why I say it, because that's it right there. They landed, this is an actual picture of that, right up close and they took the picture of it, and then they landed on there, grabbed the sample, came back, delivered it to Earth, it's here, and they have, they're looking at it. Now, I say these are the ventricles, and I say that is the, the tendon material. All right, these are the ventricles. All right, this is the tendon, you see the little, pieces coming straight up here. I don't know if you can see them or not. But that's tendinous material it wraps around. The black and the yellow and the red are colors of blood. That right there is a tube coming out. Now I'm sure they have absolutely perfect 
pictures of all this stuff. They should be able to see this is a tube and not a crater. And this is a tube and not a crater. It's a hollow tube, just as this is. It's a hollow tube. And, and this is, is as well, I'm sure, because you see the differentiation in color, the abrupt transition in color? That's the red and the black blood. They're two different styles of blood. You see over here, the red and the black? That is, this is, uh, in my mind, unquestionably a heart. And this is the different transition of colors between the, the red, the brown, the yellow, and the black. That is the signature of blood. Those are the different rust states, basically oxidation states. Now, this, you see what it is here? This is what a heart is. These are the heart valves that we were just looking at. And here's what Psyche looks like, too. And Psyche is 100% metal. They want to mine this. They think, oh, man, this is just a ton of metal. Yes, there is, because it a, it's a heart. And here's the same thing here. It has the same valves. And it has the same plumbing all around here. And this is smelted. Now, this must have gotten really close to something really hot. Because you don't smelt blood and turn it into iron and metals until you hit around, yeah, cause let's, let's say 3,000 degrees. So it was cooked. And then these turned into metals. Those are all metals. And they're thinking, oh man, we gotta make a ton of money. We land up on here, we get all these metals coming out of here. Well, let me tell you something. Those are valves. These are heart valves that seared off the edges and cooked them. There's an impact. There's not impact craters. Those are valves. All right. You see all three of them together here? You can't miss it. And this is what a real heart looks like right here. There's the two valves right next to each other. And there's a, a third one over here that is a little bit out of sight. And this is one on Earth here, a gigantic heart. And this is exactly what heart muscle looks like. And this is the same stuff. Th these things were gigantic. They were everywhere, literally everywhere. And this is what a real heart looks like with all this blood vessels and so forth coming down and all the plumbing at the top. The plumbing at the top pretty much goes, and we're looking down into the valves, which is they, they, see, they, they break right along that seam, right along that seam right there. And the top comes off, and you're down into the valves, you see down into the valves, the top has come off. Now, this is what it looked like. They're just, this is just the blood that services the heart. All right, the heart is inside, is a bag of blood, but this is, is all the stuff that makes the, the muscles work. This thing is sucking up blood, like uh, you using a lot of, lot of blood because it's got to do a lot of work. So that's why, that's just, and this is uh, quartz veins from, from Kentucky agate nothing but a heart um, so what I just showed you is the giant ones there's little ones there's big ones there's this there's that but they all are hearts and they have the blood from this or from the sample from that I say it's blood and that again is an iron meteorite with blood in it I, they can't explain this. Now, and, and oh, virtually all of them that are iron are going to have blood in them. I have them here, right here, with uh, iron, little iron meteorites. I have a, a few of them here that, uh, that I'm going to show you. I have stony iron. I mean, uh, yeah, stony iron. I have iron. And, uh, and this one, I don't know for sure. i got to look at that in the microscope. But it, it's magnetic. I mean, not, they're not magnetic. Uh, meteorites are not magnetic. They're iron. They're iron will attract a magnet, right? But in order for the blood to turn into this magnetic, attractive iron, it has to reach a certain temperature and solidify and crystallize. And that's what this is all about, is at a certain temperature, it crystallizes and becomes, mag you know, attractive. So anyway, we're going to look, look at these things and see, you know, 
what makes sense here, because I'm going to show you, this is a lung. That's a lung from a tiny little creature. And it has, a, you know, I, I'm making these statements, but I can stand behind them and I'll show you. I have the stuff in the microscope here right now. And we will look at this and there will be no question whatsoever because it has the latch on here that all lungs have. And it's different than everything else. You'll see this in a second. All right, so let's get ready to rumble. First thing we're going to do is look at this little little guy right here, which is is a stony iron meteorite. You see the black part at the top, and that's magnetic too. Hold on. See. See. That's how you know that that blood that was this this was a bone. This was a bone. And what we're going to be looking at is the blood that was in the marrow that it boiled out. And when it boiled out, it exploded the bone away from it. This part is bone. That's still bone. This is pretty unusual. And this is the iron that has smelted from the blood. And it is magnetic. And uh Anyway, we're going to look at this stuff in Z grade de detail. And it's up here in a Z microscope. And I am speaking as a French today. No, I'm not kidding. I'm just kidding. Now, here we go. This, I got to turn the lights off so we can see it, but let's get started. All right, I talked about the transition metals and how they are all in your blood. Your blood is literally nothing but metals and um, liquid water and so forth. And transition metal, ion colors. All right, ions means they're, they're, they have extra electrons or not enough electrons. They're just, they're not stable. All right, they want to attach to something or they want to give something up. And that's how, they do, that's how they do it. And they're in your blood. So think of this just logically. Just think about it. All of these metals are in your blood. I saw you 26 of them they're just testing for. Plus, iron is ubiquitous. It's tons of iron. So it's just continuously throwing through your body, through your body, through your body, through your body. And what is it doing? It's picking up and delivering different products based on these charges. And here's the way it does it. Transition metals, which are all these metals in right in this blue area primarily, they form colored compounds and complexes. And I'll show you all the different colors. And red and black is two of the different colors that are from blood, the different ionization states of blood. Now, the colors vary depending upon the charge on the metal ion number and type of groups of atoms called ligands attached to the metal ion in an aqu aqueous solution. That's water. All right, so in the water, you have these metals. Then you have other groups of atoms called ligands that come up and they attach to that piece of metal, which is one of these. It has a charge of a po positive charge. See them all positive, two, seven, three, two, five, six, whatever they attach to a whole bunch of extra little particles around it and this is a flow down in bloodstream and what do they do with those molecules well somebody down the line is it has used up what he had and he's he wants to get rid of it they're going to exchange they're going to do a swap and and that's what happens that they take on others so this explains it pretty good but I don't think you want to go into that. They have, well, let me just give you one thing that's important to understand. They're ions, which means they don't have a full, stable number of particles. So they want to give up or take on. And here's what it is. It says the electrons are arranged around the nucleus of the metal atom in orbitals. That's not far from wrong. That's pretty accurate. The transition metals, unlike other metals, have partially filled d orbitals, which can hold up to 10 electrons. When ligands are present, some d orbitals become higher in energy than before, and some become lower. Anyway, they pick up and they deliver. That's all you have to know. And that's the transition metals, and they're, that's everywhere. All, all the rocks you see, all these different 
crystals and everything, they're nothing more than transition metals in silicates primarily. All right. Carbon is a different issue. That's lower on the periodic table. Carbon and down here, that's once you get up into the silicon area, it attaches to metal metal ions basically and they grow crystals and they call them gemstones. <laughs> that's what they are, they're blood. All right, let's just make sure we're not getting lost on this thing. I showed you the transition metals, and those are just in the blood. So when all of these things boil off, all these hearts cooked off, and the meteorites, they ended up having all of those transition metals in it. And when you etch them with acid, you can see all the different types of metals that were in there, and you can see blood. All right, so, uh, and what happens is the specific organs are the things that are going to gonna, gonna um, come through as iron meteorites because they have all the iron in them, all the metals, which are hearts. That's a heart. That's psyche, all right, and it's a heart. It's a gigantic heart in space. I, know, I can't tell you how they got there, but I, I got some suspicions. But anyway, this is also a heart, and these are tubes coming out of that heart and these are the valves and this is the tendon that wraps around to the muscle if I could see every picture on this thing I could find virtually every detail and you see all these little pock marks and all that stuff those aren't necessarily impacts from craters Th this thing is saturated with blood and every one of these little tips of the blood they blow out you see this is all red right around it you see how the blood is? Look at how much blood is here. And every one of these is going to have a little spot, spot that pops out somewhere. Basically, you're going to see all these little things all over that heart. Which is what you do. You see them everywhere, you see? Now they say all those are all impact craters. Well, I'm sure it is a lot of them, yes. But I don't think they're all impact craters. I don't think so that at all. Same thing here. It's got the same exact sort of stuff. Now, so I'm saying these are hearts. This is a lung because lung is, again, saturated with blood. Blood is the stuff. But it's all the metals. It's, just, it's, it's, it's really obvious when you think about it. I mean, you just let your mind understand it. And this right here, I just got a shot showing. Uh, I guess I don't. Oh, yeah, here it is. You see, re remember this? The um, This is a called a Williamette meteorite. They stole it from the Native Americans. Anyway, that spot right there, you'll see a little blood spot. And here it is right here. You see? That's in that cavity. And I have the same thing, it's the exact same stuff as this. Exact same stuff as this. All these little, they have holes in all, everywhere because all the other blood had to come in here and circulate through all of these little cavities to pick up oxygen. They're called alveoli. And you can still see the red blood in this. But if I put a little water on it, it would just, you can see it, it's, it's red. So there's still a lot of red blood in this, but it's mostly it's evacuated out. Other ones are still saturated with blood. I have some of them that the blood came right out of it, bubbled right out. So what we're going to do is look at this little meteorite right here. That's a, a, a bony meteorite. They would call it stony. I call it bony. <laughs> and I'll show you why. Alright, I am going to go through a series of different um, intensities of light because that makes it so you can see it a lot better. But primarily this is the bone here. And then this was the marrow that was inside the bone and it is it boiled out and exploded and the bone is gone because it, it, it expands and explodes. But that's the bone. And this is a meteorite, and it's mag magnetic iron, you know, it's iron right here. Now, um, let me bring up the light a little bit. All right, now you can see, you see this is where it's got like red blood, and this is more boiled off blood, and it's blacker. You see this cooked off up there, and it gets pretty black in this area. It depends how it falls through space, it appears to me. 
But that's boiled up and, and burnt up and bubbled up and it's now turned to iron. Now in the back here, it's still bone. The bone didn't burn up because it just wasn't heavy enough. The heavier it is, the more it cooks. That's why they turn to iron when they're in the hearts and the lungs. Hold on, let me get another shot. All right, now look at this area here. This is just sort of burning, bone burning. And this is bone that did not singe. And I'm going to try to rotate this so that you can see that's just re regular bone. It didn't even hardly get cooked. You see how nice and bright that is? Over here you can see some bloody stuff still left. And if you come around all the way around, let me open up the clamp here. That's just bone. That's a blood vessel right there. You see that? That's still a blood vessel. And you come around, which is still in the bone. Now, now you would be getting into the marrow on the inside, and that is what cooked up and blew up. And that's what exploded and opened this bone right up. You see it? And that's what turned it into basically iron. And this right here is like iron. That right there will attract a magnet. Now, of course, the, the stony part, no. Or, as I say, the bony part will not. So that is 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 a meteorite, but it's a, a, a bony, stony meteorite, iron meteorite thing. All right, so now I have shown you all these things I claim in space that come, are either in space right now, these hearts, or these iron metal meteorites are from body parts that had a lot of iron and metals in it, which is blood, which is hearts and lungs, and livers, primarily. And then the rest of the stuff had some blood in it, but not a lot, like I showed you the, the, um, this one here. That one here has, has this, which was the marrow inside the bone. There's the casing of the bone. The marrow was inside. And that's what it literally exploded this. And I have a giant one here that is basically the same thing happened. This came through space, cooked off, and there was still wet blood in it, just like there was wet blood in there. Uh, only that one turned black and, and, and this one didn't. It just blew out at the very end because there's just not enough blood in this particular piece to boil out like it did with this and then turn black. Different entry process, but this was came through space like this and blew that side off. All right, and I know what this is too because I have one here that's terrestrial, that didn't come through space, but is basically the identical same thing. All right. That right there, even that little flop, you see that? See that? Let me back this out so you can see better. I didn't realize I was out of focus. You see the two of them? They're identical. You see up at the top? No difference whatsoever. That hook, that hook, and that hook. This structure, that structure. This one here, where the blood was, it just leaked out. That's where the artery was. Artery, artery, artery. They leak out. Veins don't leak out, they plug up. You see that? That's the vein side. They plug up. This is a fingertip. And so is this that came through space. This side is the red blood side, which is still wet. Red blood stays wet and it's exploded right off. This side here, you can't hardly see it, but right there, that is the vein and that's the vein right there, that little plug, you see it? They have two here and two on that side and one on the end here that's plugged off too and one on the end here that didn't blow off. 
But this one here just exploded right off because it was just saturated with wet blood. And we'll look at this in a microscope. You can see a lot of detail. I mean, this is uh, no question. It's like, and plus, you see down here, you see that circle? There was another one here. There's another one here. Those are the three major tendons that come up that lock in there. See how perfectly round they are? The human body is, and I, know, I have to assume this is a human fingertip. It looks like it to me. That's the structure of a human fingertip. Precisely identical. Well, I don't know if this is human either, but I'm, I'm pretty sure both of them are. It seems like just about everything I'm finding is. Or they had some kind of similar fingertips. All right, so that's this one coming through. This is this they would call a stony meteorite. All right, the other one was a stony iron meteorite, and the other ones are iron or I call them metal meteorites. Now, I want to show you something about this meteorite right here. All right, this one here, it has, it's a lung. All right. Now. This lung will have the same thing that all lungs have, which is, I call it a spurlock. Nobody knows about this yet in, in, in medicine, and I'm not kidding you. And I talked to one of the top guys in the world, an anatomist, does autopsies, and he said, no, nobody, nobody's thinking about that at all. At first he just said, well, it's just fashion. I said, no. I said, it's an extra little piece. It's a flap. You see that? This is a lung. Right there is the plumbing where the, it would have hooked up for the oxygen. All right, all of these are alveoli, and we're going to look at the microscope. And that right there is the lock that locks this into the body. All right, that's the lock that locks this in. It would have been stuck to something. And in the body, it looks just like this. It looks like that, see it? It come out and it latches into the next body part so that they hook together and they can send off their interstitial fluids. You see this? The only reason this is a, they took a picture of this is because this is a sports injury. This was like ugh, something got pulled and ripped the, the, this thing away from, you know, not a lung. I don't know what it is. Because this one right here, this, I have the same thing right here. This is identical. All right, you see that? Watch this. This is the exact same thing as that, only mine's sticking down, that's sticking up. You see this? That's that flap right there. Now, this is the mind blower. Don't forget, this flap here locks whatever that was, this was a muscle. And it locked it into another, like shoulder or whatever. This was a lung, and this is inside the body. It has the same latch, just like that. Same thing. Same, same. All right, and I call it the spurlock. They, they, anatomists don't realize that's a different material than the rest. All right, the rest is what they call pleura. All right, but there is that thing. Now, if I could show you that little latch, uh, this lung that came through space, which is now iron, would you be impressed? Because <laughs> I was. Because I could show it to you, and I will, right now. Okay, my friends, as promised, we're going to be doing a microscope today, looking at some meteorites and some little stones and rocks and things that... I believe I can show the same things coming through space are here on Earth. They cook up coming into the Earth's atmosphere, but we can still recognize them, I believe. So we're going to get started today. I promised you I would do the microscope, and here it comes. Okay, I would be very surprised if you don't know what a meteorite is, but just to be certain you do. A meteorite is a solid piece of debris, debris, from an object such as a comet, asteroid, or meteorite that originates in outer space, it originates in outer space, 
and survives its passage through the atmosphere to reach the surface of the planet or a moon. So it's a projectile somewhere out in space that somehow originated in space and then came through an atmosphere and as it did they cook up to some degree because there's, there's, a, there's a lot of heat in the outer atmosphere unknown to most people. It's the ionosphere, it's extremely hot, up close to 3,000 degrees and when things come through there if they have a lot of metals in them they smelt and smelting means they turn into metal meteorites and we're going to look at that and then I'm going to show you I've, I have some here and we're going to look at them in a microscope so here we go okay so we're going to get into the meteorites and I'm going to tell you right now as far as I can determine there is nothing that is not biological and that is a little iron meteorite came through space and um, I'm going to show you this in a microscope it's a lung they come small they come big and again that's you, pretty much what you want to look for is when they get magnetic if they're going to be metal because they're going to they're going to have iron in them and, and that smelts and that's um, you know you see these iron meteorites all the time well if you see them shown all the time and they look like bubbled metal like that type of thing now I got some here this one here and then I got a couple other ones we're going to look at but the key you have to remember is that that blood is all metals blood is basically all metal it's iron it's saturated with iron and then all of these other metals are in blood this is a panel of 26 elements in whole blood and, and that's just 26 of them and then in addition to that you got tons of iron and all kinds of other mostly it's blood I mean mostly it's metal in the blood and that's what carries things around so we're going to look for these signatures of the metal in the blood and then we're going to look for the anatomical signatures of the um, the way they look the lungs where they have these alveoli in them that's I, I believe probably a lung that's probably a lung hearts lungs like that right there that's a metal ast a metal meteorite that's probably going to be a lung or a heart that's probably a lung with, it, with all the little holes in it and um, I have a whole slew of pictures here from different types of meteorites and um, comets and all of that stuff and we're going to see they're all as far as I can determine there is nothing that's not biology so when I can show you that the stuff coming out of space is also biology which it is I think that should close the case that there is, that we are in a biological universe it's just biology that's as far as I can determine that's all there is all right, I, I don't know if this is an iron meteorite or not. It is magnetic to some degree, as it, this is to This, I believe, well, I know this is a lung. And there was a lung that they showed in here somewhere. A very small lung right there. That's basically the same as this. And they they turn into uh, metal because they're they're loaded with blood. And as I showed you, metal is loaded with blood. And that's this is not. I, I believe this is a meteorite, but I don't think it's an, a heart or a lung. And I'm not sure what this gnarly looking stuff is. This um, this stuff right here. You see, it 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 looks like it cooked down to a point where where the it look, these look like tendon emplacements to me we got to look at it in a microscope and then it also exploded this is blood and when I put water on it and put it in a microscope you'll, you'll see it's just red slurpy blood and I believe there was a plate on here that just popped off because the blood watery blood expands and it just blows off but uh, this thing is heavy so we're going to take a look at that, and we'll take a look at the other, uh, you know, meteorites I, uh, that I have here. And um, th this is a stony, bony meteorite. All right, it's stone. 
and blood. Right? And the blood with the stone is the is actually bone. So this was a bone, and when it came through the space, it cooked off and exploded. Because the, the blood is wet. The blood is literally cooking. And I'll show you on Comet 67P, the gases are just shooting out into space. They're nothing more than barbecue gases. These things right here. Where is it? This is the, that's shooting out of an artery. Because it's being cooked and the sun is hitting it just the right way. And the sun is hitting just the right way on these little blood vessels. So they shoot out according to where their little blood was headed. And that's kind of 67P. And that is a tendon, uh, well, that's a hip joint. I'm telling you, this is, this is what it is right here. It's a hip joint. That's 67P. And that's what, the, what a hip looks like when, uh, there it is right here. That's the hip, and that's the it break. They break right off here. I have another shot of it here somewhere. Right there. That's where they fracture, just exactly like 67P. And there's arteries, and there's veins, and there's little blood vessels, and there's tendons, and it has all of those things. All right, here's the here's where the artery is, big one. Here's where the blood vessels are, going up to service that that hip. Here's what they look like. I showed you this. All right. The the um, hip socket right there. The hip. I don't know what you call it, but it's the hip. And this is what it looks like. So it has some tendons on here. It has a little bundle of tendon that comes down so that it can jiggle back and forth and of course it's broken right there and all of those things are on 67p all right here's what it looks like right here you see that little round bundle you see that that bundle is for a tendon to come up to like pull it this way or that way whatever it did but it's a bundle that attaches, as I showed you in the anatomical. These are tendons. All right, and this little, all this dusty stuff is all the red blood that's dried out and sort of eroded down here and just laying there. And they landed a lander right on there called, called the fillet lander, and they put, picked up a sample of this and tested it, and it's organic, all biological. And um, this, this is how big that thing is. That's Raleigh, North Carolina. On an extremely bad day. And that's, that's big. Now these creatures that were in space, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how big they were, but this here is that, I showed you that artery shooting out that huge plume of gases. This is all 500 feet across. That's how big that artery is. And these are all the little blood vessel that go in to service the tissues. They call them dragon balls, you see? And that's what is burning off. And the, the, the astronauts say space smells like steak and burning metals. Because as I showed you, that is nothing more than what blood is, is metals. And that's what we're shooting out of that artery and out of those little blood vessels from that hip joint that was broken off and laying around in space. You know, people say, oh, you know, well, I, I can't account for all these things, but they are here. I would deal with what's here. And this is a, a, a giant, um, lung came through space and cooked off and if on earth they look like this I have that's why I'm showing you I have all the things on earth that's coming through space they're here same stuff that's a lung and that's why it turned into all metals because it was loaded with blood it's just nothing but blood 
And when it comes through the ionosphere, they cook up to 3,000 degrees. They, they burn off all of the, the, the weak things, and the metals remain, just like that. This one's not, there's nothing more than another lung like this, only it's just much smaller, and it didn't have the, the, the burn that that did, so it didn't melt and smell, because in here there's blood. I, I'm gonna show you actually raw red blood in this. If this was cut across, you'd actually see the little chambers in the heart, and you'd see the blood. And I have ones that didn't show that blood like that. All right, right here, cut right across, you see that? That's red blood. And this is a meteorite. And this is all the different types of metals, all these different colored looking crystals, they're different types of metals. That's the vein, which is a black used up blood. And this is the red, which is the really bright red blood, which is from the ar artery. So the things coming through space are biological. And this, and this can be very, very easily proven. All right, this is um, that scruffy-looking spot. And it's, it's just a spot, and it has all these little spicule-looking things in there. Now, I'm going to put some water in there. And use, I can see there's some blood in here. There's some red spots. You see the red spots of blood? And the white, I don't know what's going on there. I really don't know, to be perfectly honest with you, what that is. And did it come through space? I don't know. What that is, is to be determined. But I can see there's, there's blood in there. There's a substantial amount of blood in there. And I would say that that right there is the vein side and that is the artery side. And these, I, I would say that some kind of a tendon attachment was this, this is tendinous fibers. That is what my take is right now. I'm having a hard time with this one because I don't know where that would run to. That's what it looks like to me. You see all of how red that is? And around it, it, it looks like it might have been cooked up. When you put a little water on stuff, you see things a lot better. And that looks a lot blackish. You know, this whole area looks like it was singed. So again, what that is, je ne sais pas at this moment, I do not know. But I'm starting to think it is a meteorite. Yeah, the more I look, the more it's, it's pretty certainly a meteorite. And this is like burnt off fascia. There's going to be some blood in here. When this was wet, you could really see it, and it's going to be wet again. But this time, I'm going to put it wet with hydrogen peroxide. And we should see a lot of reaction down in in down in here and where this red blood is wherever there's blood there should be catalase and catalase is an enzyme and it's an enzyme that breaks oxygen off of when you have too much oxygen so I'm going to put some hydrogen peroxide in here and see if we can get a, a reaction of bubbling I might have to get a lot closer to this to actually see it happen. Nope, look at a bubble. You see it bubbling down in here? When I get right down on top of that, you'll see it bubbling like crazy. You see it down in here? Now let me just sort of saturate it out good, and then I'm gonna get right down on top of it and you'll see it really bubbling up good. You 
see a bubble and down in here? That's the catalase reaction. And that's an enzyme, and it's in blood. You see it coming out of here? You only see it where there's a lot of enzymes. And there is a lot of enzymes in here. So even though it came through space, there's still a lot of wet red blood in this thing. And I think this did, I'm pretty sure now that this is a meteorite. Now, over here, this is where it got cooked off. All right, you know, it doesn't look like it's cooked off until you get it wet. Now watch, I think this was cooked off and you still see some white flakes, which is kind of unusual. It must have come in in a strange way. But I'm going to put some, ca some um, hydrogen peroxide on there. And we should see some reaction, but it shouldn't last a real long time. Uh, you can see some reaction going on here. Let me come down closer and turn the lights down so that we can see it a little better. You see, out here you don't see much. You see the little bits here and there. But this has been, this has been cooked. So the catalase is, is pretty much wiped out. But where, where those cavities were, and all those little spicular looking things, they still have a lot of catalase in them. And this does too in spots. You see it, Bob, on here? All right, there's probably a little artery there or something. But normally, on the surface, you're not going to get it last too long. It's going to go away. But in those, those cavities, they'll bubble forever because the blood is running way down through the body part. All right, check this out. This has been laying around in my shop for 10 years at least. And this is, the, this is a layer of blood. Now watch this. I'm going to rehydrate it. And this should turn almost instantly into red blood. Just keep your eye on that for a second as it dries up a little bit. You'll see that it is basically red blood. You see that? Now that's some cooked off a little more over there, but mostly it's just raw red blood. And that was in a layer of tissue. There was another layer on top. And that top layer just exploded off because this expanded and popped it right off. Now what we're looking at is this right here. Now I'm going to put this in the light. Hold on a second. All right, this is what I was just showing you in the microscope. And that right there is the red blood that all bubbled up. And there was a, this piece right here came right across the top and just snapped right off. You see how that red blood is there? I hope you can see that. But that's, that was attached to this piece here. There was a piece that came out, right I'm sure. And it just exploded because it, it was wet and it had no place to go other than to explode the piece off the top. All right, and I, again, I, I, that's the only way I can account for this. That's the only possible way I can account for this. So that's how I'm going to account for it. And again, we'll take a look at the vein and the artery. Um, and it has all these little cavities in here, very strange looking, gnarly looking things. 
I'm not exactly sure what kind of a body part this was, but I do now feel I'm pretty confident it is, you know, a, a meteorite. You know, basically, but what it was, I'm not exactly sure. It, it might have been a lung. I don't know. I do not know. But I don't think so. At this point, it is what you call a mystery meteorite. All right, so let's look at the vein and the artery. All right, this is a little tough because I got to do this sort of by hand. But that right there, you know, I've scraped this. I just, I scraped it to get some blood out of it and stuff. But let me put some water in there and see what happens. All right, this is this this is so hard that it's not absorbing water well at all. Usually they will, but whatever it is, that's the vein or the artery. And then the other one is over here, which is this one. Right there. Very hard to see. Hold on, let me turn the light up. Well, I don't think the light being up is going to help. I think it's just too shiny. But uh, you saw them, one or the other. But anyway, this is it's right there, I think. Yeah, that's it right there. You just can't see it. But that is it. So I would say this is the vein side because it's as black as as black can be. And the other side here, let me dry that up so we can see it a little better. There it is right there. That's the vein. That's my estimation, that's the vein. Of course, this is the the skin or whatever was around here. And this, this I'm, I'm pretty darn sure now that this is a meteorite. So, and that's the vein coming in. Now we're going to move ourselves over to where the artery is. Alright, so we're looking at the vein, and then we're going to go over to the artery, which is right there. And you can see, I can see red blood. I can see red in this area. It's, it's got some red to it, where the other one just is totally black. But this is, it services the, at, on the outside of what I would have to assume this was muscle or something. But this would be called a stony a stony metal meteorite. Alright, so it's not really solidly metal, but it's got quite a bit. And this, whatever it was, I believe uh, that's hard to say, but I would have to say that's the, the vein. This is the kind of thing I get into. I, I spend an hour looking at this, trying to figure out one way or the other what I'm looking at. Take some time to do this. But I'm going with this one here as the artery. That's the, whoop, I'm seeing the red in that area. You see, this is the area that bubbled off and exploded. As it bubbled off, it just popped that piece off the top of it. That's, that's, that's just red blood. And that's where it boiled off and exploded that piece away. And back here, well, you, you, you can see there's no question that's red blood. I mean, if you can't see it, it's red blood, and that can be easily tested. Now, I'm not going to do any more of this test, and I did it. I did three DNA tests, and they all came out positive for human DNA, and I took them from very, very 
excellent red blood sources inside, not on the surface. I didn't take anything from the surface. You swab from the surface means very little. But once you take off of this edge and you get down inside, then it means a lot because now you're in a sequestered area that's, that's just not exposed to the elements, basically. There's membranes around these things that are protecting them, really literally protecting them. Yeah, I got to go with a cooked off meteorite, and this is some of the, the fabric. All right, this is another very interesting spot I just saw as I was getting ready to put this away. This is cooked up and burnt through, exposing this cavity here. Now, what that cavity is, it appears to me, it's, it's a, a red blood vessel or a blood vessel of some sort. And you see that little white stuff in there? I'm not certain, but I think that is fibrin, which is the clotting factor fabric that is, it makes scabs. And I think that might be the artery and that might be the vein of this. Although, I don't know, I really have no idea to be perfectly honest with you. But I know, I can tell you one thing, that is, well, actually, I think these are the two right here. I think that's the artery, and that's the vein. And this is some kind of clotting fiber that's stuck, stuck in there. Now I'm looking at it. Yeah, I think that's the vein, and that's the artery. And this is what something they would call a bone foramen, or a foramen, or however they want to pronounce it. But this, this cooked off and just exploded out. That was red blood that was in there. And that's why this just exploded out of here. Yeah, this is definitely a meteorite. All right, check this out. This is just too cool. This is where it got, it was just overheated and burnt up basically and exploded the blood out. Now I'm going to show you one that I have here that's from a terrestrial bone that didn't explode like that. You see this? This didn't cook off like the other one. It just leaked the blood out. The other one cooked off and exploded the blood out. Remember? It cooked off and exploded the blood out, but you still have the black and the red. I believe that's what we're looking at here. The black right there and the red right there. Okay, now let's go back to this. This didn't burn off because it's terrestrial. And what else can we see here? This is the fibrin that I was talking about. We could see that white stuff that was down inside the, the cavity before. And like I said, there's a red and a black hole in the bottom that brings that blood out and here's that red and black hole right there there's a red one you see that hole right there that's bringing out the red blood this is a black one you see the black coming out and that's the clotting fiber of course I removed all that stuff but that's why I was pointing to those little two holes in it before saying well that could be the artery that could be the vein and then I did see him pretty pretty clearly the artery and vein So don't forget, that's what I'm saying. I think that is a clotting fiber, and that would be the vein, the black side, and that would be the artery. Now, originally I was looking at these two, but I think it's, this is actually what the right, correct ones. And of course, that's the, the meteorite one. All right, you see that right there? That's comet, I mean, uh, asteroid Bennu. These are all the colors. Look at these different colors. Now look at what you see up here. <laughs> that right there is that little iron lung. This is the burnt off pleura on the outside. There's still some little white flakes, but this is all the alveoli cavities, and that is literally red blood. And there's cavities all over this thing. And there's red blood all over because it's a lung. And I will show you the latch on here that I call the spurlock. But look at how much, this is just saturated with blood, and all of these are these alveoli, and it's cooked off and burnt off. 
Now you see this black area here and the little white flakes. You see that? And then all the blood up there. And how this is all blacked off, but there's still some little white flakes. Let me show you what a, a lung looks like that didn't get cooked off. But there'll be tons, and you you won't you don't get down into the into here either because they didn't blow out. You'll see a nice coating of pleura and all a ton of these little white flakes all over because that's what coats lungs. All right, show on this little bitty lung here. It's all blacked off. It has these same little white flakes because it's a lung, and this this is a fabric. And the same thing with this lung. At one time, it was doing this just like everybody else's lung. And it has to have a coating. And inside is where all the cavities are and the alveoli. You see here? These are, these are what they call alveoli, all these little tiny holes. You see them? These are the alveoli. And this one here turned into silicon. This is another lung right here. All of the pleura went away on this lung, completely, totally gone. And it it took on silicon for, for some reason. I can't tell you exactly why. But these all of these alveoli filled with silicon, and even the fabric became silicon. It had to be in some special condition. And these and the blood settled, so it was like laying like this. And the blood settled to the bottom and it actually seeped out of here, some of it right here, and every, every so often in some of those little tiny red spots. You see? Now this also has that little flap right there. It's on the bottom of all lungs. This one has it too. I'll show you this. And this one has it too. They all have it. They all have that flap. Every single one, even the oddball ones like this. I don't know whether it was a chipmunk or something. I have no idea what it was. But this one here is exceptionally excellent to for study because this lost all of the, the bloody matrix and left the alveoli like this and the latch which is that latch. Completely separate. It's, it's a totally separate entity to the pleura. The pleura and the fascia is gone. And I'll show you in the microscope. These are the alveoli. Alright, these are the alveoli. It's just a much smaller lung. Alright, and then that's that flap right there. That latch that latched the lung into the body so that it didn't go floating around and ripping and tipping and doing all this. It was latched in. And all of them have that same latch. They all have it. And this is another lung. I don't know what kind of a creature this was in. But it's a lung. And that has that little gnarly latch at the bottom too. They all have that little flap. Even muscles that invest into the shoulders and all that have that kind of a flap too. I think I might have a shot of that here somewhere. Hold on. All right, you see this right here? This is nothing but a chunk of meat. It's this rock right here, and this is it, and a little tab sticking down. This you can see better in the picture, but this is nothing more than meat. And this is the grisly part of the meat when you eat it, and you have to take these little chunks off the edges that they're the, the, the tough, tough stuff, because that right there is the latch that latched this piece of meat into the shoulder or wherever it went. And this is a sports injury, and this is the same latch, and it's being pulled away. That is totally different. It's a totally different substance than the rest of the pleura back here. They, they, and they still think now that this pleura is the same as this. It's just a little extension, but it's not. It's, it is actually, absolutely, a completely different substance. And I have a number of these to show that it's quite certainly the case. It's totally different than the rest. So let's take a look at that in the microscope. All right, it doesn't get any cooler than this. 
That is that flap that I'm talking about. From right here out to here, it's totally different than back here. Same thing with this one. Now, see that little, this little strip coming down the center there? Look up here. This is in the microscope. That's the flap on a lung. Exactly the same, identical. And it is a completely different substance than the fascia that was around it. This is all the fascia. This has changed in a different way than, than these other lungs, but it's still the same tissue. That's the key. It depends on how they were preserved. Now I'm going to put a little bit of water on here, and you'll see things will change up a little bit. You see it now? This is all lung tissue. And a lot of these are alveoli, and they have really spectacular little colors to them. I have some cut open here. I'll show you the colors that are inside of them. But you don't see much. You see this? This is when it's dried out. Look at the difference just when you get it wet. But that, that is the spurlock. That's the, that latches all organs together and chunks of meat to other chunks of meat. And I believe there's, I believe these are two little dots in the end here that connect the tissue, the, the um, lymph fluids from one body organ part to another because it, this, like I say, that's a fluid filled highway. And I believe this one has the same sort of thing down here. I have other shots of it, of, and I think it might be down here, I'm not sure, but I have other ones, I think it's two of them side by side, I have to look at it. You don't really see it in this one all that well, but this is in the microscope right now, you can see it very clearly. You see those two little white dots? This is the tip of the spurlock of the latch. And these apparently continue somehow the fluid from this organ, which is going to be totally different than what it's going into. Because let's say this is a muscle and it's attaching to a kidney or something. Because you can have muscles attached to kidneys, tendons attached to this and that, and they have different chemistry within those different organs. So you have to stop the fluids here from being the same kind of fluids and go into a new fluid system. I, as far as I'm concerned, that's got to be the case. It has to be. There's d d different chemistry in every different organ. So you have to have different fluids surrounding that organ because it's going to be, uh, some of them have acids, some of them have salts, some of them have blood, some of them have whatever. So this, this is critical. And you know, the funny thing is, is during my research, I discovered that these acupuncture points are in these areas a lot, where you have major investments of tissues coming together. Maybe that they just had to open something up with a pin or something, <laughs> excited a little bit to get it working again. I don't know. It's a, it's a, there's a lot to consider here. And I, this, I re did all this in 2015. I wrote the paper talking about the fluid-filled highway, about how it was one giant organ system, how the acupuncture points were in these investment places. All that was back in 2015 in my paper, Fascia Facilitated Fossilization, because originally I thought it was the fascia that was the fossilization primary actor, which it is. But in order to have that, you had to have boiling hot waters and heavy silicate solution and mud. So I call them mud fossils. That was originally it was going to be fascia facilitated fossilization. I went away from that into mud fossils. Okay, this is spectacular. This is a small um, lung. It's terrestrial, didn't come through space. But what it did was that the latch we're going to look at first. And then I want to show you all the alveoli and how those alveoli took on the colors of transition metals. 
because that's what's in your in your blood is transition metals that's what your blood's made of all right so here's the latch all right there's the latch and see all those little tiny different colored little bubbles that laying around there here's the latch all right and then down below you can see all of these different little things <laughs> different colors and so forth that's transition metals now i'm going to turn it over to the side i cut it in half so it's got a nice clear cut hold on a second all right i cut this you know, and polished it a smidge now you see all those different colors you see those those are all different transition metal colors same sort of stuff you're seeing there. All right, and they have formed in these alveoli holes and vugs and so forth. And they're all over the thing. So that's, a, that's just a little tiny lung. All right, so they all have the latch. They all have, they all have blood in them. All right, now this is another lung. This is just stunning. That right there, I think the guy got hit with something, stabbed through his heart. I mean, through the lung right there, because all that stuff isn't supposed to be there. That's supposed to be nice and smooth, just like that, just like this everywhere else that's not supposed to be there and when we look at it in the microscope you're going to see it's um it looks to be like the guy got stabbed or something right through the or whatever kind of creature it was but it's a lung this is going to be really interesting to look at all right here's that lung that i think the guy got stabbed this is what the lung should look like it's all these different little alveoli right? they're just sort of normal and then all of a sudden you hit this this right here what the heck is this that's just not supposed to be that way and it's almost a circular pattern it's a big circular pattern actually it's all the way around here I could come back off it and you could see it better, but this and whatever that is blew out from that, what I think that was some kind of a, a puncture. None of the rest of the lung is like that. You see how it's all just sort of normal looking, even on the backside, same thing. There's nothing like that other globby, big globby looking stuff. It's pretty smooth. But then you see that thing. And that is a different issue, my friends. And I believe that right there is this where it jabbed into him. You see it? Let me come off of that a little and adjust this a little better. But I believe this is this like circular pattern right here. And this is just exploded right out. That's the weakest part. And that's not supposed to be like that. Just not supposed to be like that. Roger. All right. Okay, my friends, I'm being called away for other obligations. This, again, is an iron meteorite, metal to be precise, mostly iron, and that is blood because this was some form of an organ. This, as well, is the blood in this particular piece of meteorite, whatever it is, I'm not sure. But it is a meteorite, and I have sh I, I've shown that to myself. I've proven it pretty exclusively to myself because of the blood being blown out. It was overheated, and the blood blew out of here, as I showed before, in some of these spots. 
and um, and there is the vein and the artery in here and whatever this was I'm not exactly certain but it's absolutely 100% biology and there's still red blood in here and that red blood exploded blew off that piece right there I think I've explained this extremely well I hope and if not I would like to know what I have missed in my explanation I love you all it's time to re position ourselves in the universe let's think about this just think about it. I don't care if you want to go along with it now that's up to you but I can tell you what there is absolutely zero question zero that that was alive at one time and that is blood artery vein this was alive at one time came through space <laughs> we're in a in a biological universe my friends nobody's ever even considered this before and I wouldn't either until I found what I found I mean meteorites are saturated with blood and they're all of them it's not just one or two or three or four or dozens they're every one of them has the same signature of biology we are in a, a universe that is completely constructed of biology and some of it is absolutely stunningly large I love you all bye